Today, I'm at Dix Creek, exploring the history of this area. Dix Creek is alongside Highway 406 as it snakes its way through the St. Catharines downtown area. The creek is a small, slow-moving tributary that flows into 12 Mile Creek. A massive amount of water flows through 12 Mile Creek these days as a result of water being diverted through the DeCue Falls Generating Station. The landscape here bears only a faint resemblance to what it must have looked like when the first European settlers came to this area. Dix Creek is named after Richard Pierpoint, a black loyalist settler. Richard Pierpoint was born in 1744 in Bundu, West Africa, which is today part of Senegal. He was captured in the African Tribal Wars at the age of 16 and forced into slavery. He served as a manservant for Providence Pierpoint, a British officer, and during the American Revolutionary War was given his freedom in exchange for fighting in the British military. During this time, he was given the name Richard Pierpoint. Following the British defeat by 1780, Pierpoint was a soldier in the Butler's Rangers Regiment in Niagara. After his discharge in 1788, he was given a grant of 200 acres of farmland. The stream that flowed through his farm became known as Dix Creek. During the War of 1812, Pierpoint volunteered, even though he was now 60, for service in a small black corps formed by Robert Runchy, a tavern owner in Jordan, which became known as Captain Runchy's Company of Colored Men. The company fought in a number of the notable battles during the War of 1812 and was involved in the construction of Fort Mississauga, located in current-day Niagara-on-the-Lake. In 1829, the first Welland Canal was opened, using Dix Creek as a channel to get to 12 Mile Creek and on to Lake Ontario. The second Welland Canal also used Dix Creek as part of the route and was in use until 1881, when the third Welland Canal opened. The remnants of the second Welland Canal locks can still be seen today. By 1887, the creek was used for water diversion through the remnants of the second Welland Canal. It may seem like a sleepy backwater today, but it seems so amazing when you think about the contributions made by men like Richard Pierpoint to the formation of Upper Canada.